Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to install the Derby database so you can have a very lightweight database with a small footprint to test things such as Java database connectivity. The Derby database is free and you can access it from this URL right here. This is Apache's website. The first thing you need to do is download this file and what you end up with is this file right here. You'll see that this is a zip file. So just double click on the zip file. You'll see that you have this folder or you can just extract it. I'm going to copy this and I'm simply going to paste it somewhere convenient such as my C drive. We'll wait a minute for that to extract. And now you'll see that we have this bin directory right here. Let's double click on it to expand it and you'll see that we have this lib directory. Inside the lib directory we have several jar files. I'm going to scroll down until I see this derby run file. What I'm going to do now is open up a command prompt and I'm going to navigate to that derby directory and then go to the lib directory and here is a file called derby run dot jar. So the next thing I do is I run java dash jar now of course you're going to have to have your Java runtime environment on your machine for this to work. And then we say derby run dot jar server start. Okay, you'll see that we have a little information splashing across this page. And now it says it's ready to accept connections on port 1527. Now, don't kill this window, because if you kill it, it's going to stop Derby. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you have the Derby executable on your path, so you can execute it from wherever you want. So I open up another command prompt, and you'll see here that under the Derby directory, we have a bin directory, and underneath there we have an executable called ij. Okay, so IJ, if you type this in, it gives you the interactive mode for Derby. Now, let's take a note of this path right here. In fact, I'm just going to copy this. And now I'm going to go to my computer, right click on here, go to Properties, and I'm going to go to the Advanced System Settings and set up my environment variables. Okay, so let's find our path. Here's our path. We're going to edit it and now I'm just going to hit the end key to get to the very end and then I hit a semicolon and control V to paste it. Let me get rid of that IJ right there. Now we hit OK, OK again, and OK again. And now anywhere from your directory system you can type in IJ and it will work. Okay, now I have a SQL script that I want to execute that's going to uh, create some tables and uh, populate the data in those tables. And I happen to have it in a special directory, so what I'm going to do right now is actually exit out of here, and I'm going to navigate to where it is. So I'm going to cd to my SQL admin directory, and you'll see that I have a jsf.sql file right here. Okay, so that just contains, once again, the drop statements for the tables, the recreate statements, and all the population of the tables. Okay, so now that I'm in there, I'm going to relaunch IJ, and I'm going to create a database. I'm going to have the username of student and the password of student. So the way we do this is we say connect JDBC colon and here I'm going to say JDBC colon Derby colon actually let's just call this MyDB1 and now we're going to give the options so the user is student the password is student and we're going to create the database so when you say create equals true that's what creates the database so you can have all sorts of options right after the semicolon you just separate these with semicolons. I hit enter. Takes a couple seconds for this to execute. And if you get no error, it means that the database was created.
So now I'm going to run the script that's in my current directory. So I just say run jsf.sql semicolon and it's creating all the necessary stuff for me. Okay, so now that we have all that data in there, we're good to go. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to use JDeveloper to create a connection to Derby. Here's my JDeveloper. I'm going to create a new application and I'll just make this a generic application. Now let's go ahead and create a connection. Do File, New, Connections, Database Connection. And now we're going to, let's just call this Derby Connection. Instead of Oracle JDBC, we're going to say Generic JDBC. Remember our username was student and our password was also student. Let's remember to save the password so we don't have to provide it every time. And you'll see that the driver class that we need is not available, but what we can do is click on New, and we're going to browse to where our jar files are. And now we're going to say New. Let's give this a library name. We'll call this derblib. Let's deploy it by default and add a couple entries in here. We have derby.jar and derbyclient.jar. Okay, hit OK and then OK again. Make sure your driver class is org.apache.derby.jdbc.clientdriver and yes, this is case sensitive. Hit OK. And now for the JDBC URL, we're going to see we're going to say JDBC colon derby colon slash slash and the host name where your database is sitting. So in my case, it's localhost. You can put the host name or the IP address, followed by a colon and then a port number where it's sitting, followed by a slash and then the name of the database and simply hit OK. And then when you go to your application resources, you can drill down and find your database. Well, I hope you found this video tutorial very useful. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.